Auburn commits continuing to go off each week. Let's break it down. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the bug, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. Yes, sir. We're back. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Rush, a.k.a. Charlie Five, and we are ready to get into it. Talk a little bit. Last week, we did a recruiting commit update, talked about some of their uh, high school games the previous week and their stats. We're going to do a little bit of the same thing this week. We got three guys singled out that we're going to uh, talk about. We got 2025 guys. We got a 2026 guy. Dudes are going off. Dudes are going off, and you need to know about it. You you need to follow them and and make sure that you're up to date on what our boys, our young Tigers, future Tigers are doing. But before we do that, we got to give a shout out to mybookie.ag. Use coupon code next round, all one word, and double your first deposit. Double your first deposit up to a thousand dollars. Give them five hundred dollars. They're going to give you. 500 more free to play with. Uh, everybody loves free money to play with, so why not uh, Why not give them a shot? They got all the college football lines you can imagine. First half, second half, live betting, everything to go, to go along with college football. Tons of fun, and they got the NFL too. All the same stuff for the NFL. So check them out, mybookie.ag, coupon code next, uh, next round on your first deposit to double that deposit. All right, guys. Uh, this recruiting class obviously is elite. Uh, it's one of Auburn. It's the Auburn's currently. It's the best Auburn recruiting class ever, as far as from a points perspective. Uh, who, where they fall in the rankings doesn't matter. When you look at just sheer points that you get for recruits and the scores that different sites give you, currently you have the top recruiting class you've ever had. If you don't add another players so you know you got some elite players so you expect you're probably going to see some high uh octane statistics uh on the both sides of the ball offense and defense now this class is pretty defensive heavy so you got a lot of defense uh, a lot of defensive guys that are showing out the skill should be coming soon so just hang in there the skill guys should be coming soon and you got a little you'll have a little bit more options to to go, we'll have a little bit more options to go through and track. The first guy I want to talk to, hey, if you ever thought the only reason you're taking this kid was because of his big brother, uh, wait till you see the stats that this kid, Ja'Caleb Falk, had this week. Uh, they play – He's a he goes to Highland Home uh, in Alabama. It's a 2A school, so a little bit smaller, but he does what you expect to – what you expect to be done at a 2A school – he does. He has seven tackles, two tackles for loss, four quarterback pressures, a blocked punt, and a 53-yard touchdown reception. The man does it all, and he's playing against a 5A school. So 2A to 5A, that's a big that's a big gap in Alabama. I don't know what it's like elsewhere, but in Alabama, from 2A to 5A, that's a massive jump. Uh, look, he does everything. He does everything. He is listed. Uh, Auburn has him as a linebacker. He's 6'3", uh, 225, 230 pounds. It's it's hard to imagine that he's not going to get bigger. It's hard. He, he plays sort of like a stand-up uh, buck edge guy at, at Highland Home, rushing the passer, you know, getting in there almost every single play. Um, it's hard to imagine him playing anything else at Auburn. I know they want to give him a shot at an actual stand-up linebacker. That's what they're recruiting him as, and he's athletic enough to do it. I mean, you see it. He do, he he's on the punt punt block team. He's catching passes as, at tight end, uh, doing a little bit of everything. But it's just hard to see how that kid's not going to end up being 240, 250 pounds. Uh, he is just a he's he's still growing. I saw him. Uh, he was at the game this past weekend, saw him on the field, and 6'3 feels a little bit generous. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's a he's a big old boy, uh, and he's easy to spot. He is just a very, very impressive 
physically uh, young man, and uh, I think he's going to do good things at Auburn. Again, I, I said it earlier, this is a kid that you would have – recruited had his brother gone to FSU. If his brother went to FSU, you'd have had to battle FSU probably. But this is a kid you would have gone if, – if Keldrick would not have flipped to Auburn, this is still a kid that you want. This is still a kid that you would, you know, pursue heavily, pursue heavily to get. Uh, I mean, you're talking the number 117 overall in, uh, you know, top 120 player – in the uh, in the on three industry average, and then you're talking a top fifty player on two four seven. So some sites love him even more than others. So he's got uh, again six three and a half two twenty five Highland Home Alabama listed as a linebacker. Feels like he's going to be an edge guy at Auburn eventually. May start off there. Be hell on special teams. He's going to murder somebody on kickoff return his freshman year. I just know it. Um, uh, yeah, kickoff not kickoff return kickoff team. Uh, I see him, he's that athletic to be able to run down the field and hit somebody. So uh, somewhere, somewhere, some way, somehow, he's going to hurt somebody in his fr his freshman year here. So he, when he gets that mop-up duty, whether it's special teams, whatever it is, uh, this kid is special and Auburn is getting a great one, absolute great one in J. Caleb Falk. Early commitment, and he's been sort of like a rock solid. He's taken some other visits. Don't let's don't let's don't kid ourselves. Let's don't act like nobody else wants this kid. He's taken some visits. Alabama came at him hard. Florida obviously has come at him hard. There's a ton ton of SC schools that love this kid, but he's going to be an Auburn Tiger, and he is having a very very impressive. A very very impressive, uh, you know, start to the season uh, again. Does a little bit of everything, whether it's, you know, rushing the passer, uh, blocking punts, or catching touchdowns. The man's, man does it all. Uh, next guy, we talked about him a little bit last time we did one of these shows, but he went ahead and had him a big game. Uh, new boy, Anquan, uh, new boy, Fagans. Uh, Thompson plays really, really good competition to start the year. So they play team. They played, I think it was Grayson. Their first high school game, their first game, which was uh, a very, very good team out of Georgia, very tough game. And then they played Lipscomb Academy. If you remember Lipscomb Academy, that's where Hank Brown went. Uh, Lipscomb kind is out of Tennessee. They have been sort of like a you know IMG light type uh, type school where they get a lot of kids from all over to play. And I believe they played Lipscomb Academy, and I think they beat them pretty handily, but. Anquan had a special game. Uh, he had seven tackles, uh, one tackle for loss uh, at safety, which is kind of tough to do, uh, two pass deflections, and the biggest pass breakups, and the biggest thing was a 93-yard kickoff return. That's a part of his game that uh, – that's another part of his game that Auburn really loves – the return game, he can do a little bit of both. He can do punts and kickoffs. This particular one was a kickoff return. Uh, this is the thing about this is the thing about Anquan that you have to remind yourself. Okay, Anquan Fagans was, you know, quote unquote, you know, locked in with Auburn for for months and months and months. Like it almost seemed like he was a guy that was committed, but he wasn't committed. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was. We all knew he was going to go to Auburn. Uh, but he just wasn't publicly with Auburn, and it came. It, it took all the way up to Big Cat Weekend, uh, and so a little bit of the luster of that commitment, that surprise element, uh, we kind of missed out. We kind of missed out because he was seemingly all Auburn. Uh, some uh, you know for such a long period of time, he had a brother transfer but, uh, to Auburn. Uh, a couple of months prior to his commitment, which made it even seem more that he was going to be at Auburn. So when he actually announced, I feel like some people weren't quite as excited uh, as they really should have been because you were getting a consensus top 100 safety. I mean, we're talking – uh, we're talking top 100, uh, top uh, top 80 on on three, top 100 on two four seven, top 40 on ESPN, and top 70 on Rivals. I mean, depending on which site you're looking at, you're talking about a, another, you know, top two or three player in the state of Alabama. I mean, a absolute franchise 
safety. Like this kid, you it's going to be very, very hard to keep him off the field when he gets here. I mean, there whether it's nickel, whether he plays uh plays safe free safety, strong safety, whatever, the kid is elite. We're talking the best of the best defensive backs right here in the state of Alabama. And unfortunately, because he was <laughs> because he was tracking with Auburn the whole time, I feel like we didn't get quite as pumped as we should have. I mean, dude's having a big year this year. Uh, he's coming to Auburn, top 100 recruit. Like this is a guy that should be celebrated maybe more than just about any of them. Uh, I mean, he is an absolute stud. I could not be more excited. And this new return, this not new, but the return element of his game is very, uh, very exciting. You love to have exciting return re- return specialists in the in, you know that are return specialists are are game changing. And to be able to have somebody that can flip the field on a kickoff flip the field on a punt, the momentum it gives you when something like that goes off, when something like that happens, uh, Anquan Fagans is the guy uh, that's going to be able to do that. Not only that, but he's going to be a lurker back there in the defensive secondary. uh, And he'll uh, clearly, when you get tackles for loss as a safety, he'll come up and and pop you behind the line too when he diagnoses the run. Very, very fast. He had a fumble return for a touchdown. Uh, He had a fumble return for a touchdown in in the first game against Grayson. He also played corner. (laughs) He he can kind of do anything in the defensive backfield. So you get him here, it don't really matter where you put him. The kid's gonna be the kid's gonna be uh, a stud. He's already, you know, he's already over six foot, close to two hundred pounds. That is exactly what you want out of a DB, and then mega mega athletic. Uh, I honestly think he maybe even at you know, even with his high rankings, he may be ranked too low. Right? He is – he's that special. Uh, and he's going to be a Tiger, and he's having a big year. Seven tackles, I think five solo tackles, which if you look – if you like – the, if you believe in the uh, tackle to assisted tackle ratio, okay, you want to have mo- a solo tackle to assisted tackle ratio like I do. You know, you can get these stats padded with a bunch of assisted tackles. I want a very uh, – I don't know if you call it high or low, but – I want very few assisted tackles to solo tackles, and he had a very good solo tackle night uh, against uh, against I guess Lipscomb Academy uh, this past this past week. Uh, and uh, I don't see him slowing down uh, anytime soon. He's going to have a, a big year, and who knows? He could his his ranking could get higher, especially when he gets to these All Star games that you know he's going to play in. And Quan Fagan's very very special. Do not take this kid for granted. Uh, he is a uh, he's a beast. He's an absolute beast. Uh, last guy we're going to talk about, but before we talk about him, uh, you want to talk about another beast. The beast on the financial trail. The beast in the financial space. You got to give a shout out to our boy Ford Stokes with retirement results presented by Active Wealth. Uh, we talked about uh, Anquan having all the all the tools of the game, uh, great in every aspect of the game. There you go. Check out. You also got Ford Stokes who can help you in every aspect of your retirement, whether it be uh, Social Security, whether it be so, uh, making sure you're getting your maximum Social Security benefit, whether it's checking, make sure you're uh, deleting the IRS from your retirement plan, that you're reducing fees, whatever it is, uh, Ret- Ford Stokes has got it. Ford Stokes can help you do it. Go to retirementresults.com forward slash plan and Ford can hook you up. Make sure you're on the right track. Tell them more Eagle. Tell them I sent you Ford Stokes with retirement results presented by Active Wealth. Uh, first 2026 guy that we are going to talk about is another safety. Uh, and this is another kid who uh, this is another kid who you really have to watch out for because he is going to sky. I mean, I think this he's another guy who could skyrocket uh, in the rankings, and that's Jamichael Garrett out of Gulf Shores, Alabama. Uh, already, man, uh, just balling out in his junior year. Plays linebacker, plays safety. He's that big hybrid. Excuse me, this big hybrid type safety, very similar to Eric Winters. Uh, J. Mike was at the game this past Friday, and you cannot – when you talk about seeing uh, – if you can tell, you can't – looking at guys and saying that guy is a senior, that guy's a junior, that guy's a sophomore, 
I, I thought that I thought he was a uh, you know this was a uh, 2025 commit that's that's coming in next year. He is physically uh, built, physically mature as a junior, uh, and and he is all Auburn. Like this guy is locked in. Uh, I know it's a long way to go until the 2026 signing day, but you're talking big time safety, big time hybrid guy that can do a little bit of all, a almost carbon cutout of Eric Winters. Eric Winters is a little bit bigger, but when you talk about athleticism, uh, there's not much difference. That, and you've got two guys that play very, very similar games coming in back to back years. You got Eric Winters coming in. This year, and then you'll have J. Mike from Gulf Shores coming in the following year. Again, already over six foot, uh, 200 pounds. Consensus, uh, I don't want to say consensus, but right around 100 uh, top 150 player almost across the board. Rivals has him a little bit closer to 200, but uh, I think he's the number eight overall player in the state, according to On3 in 2026. Had a big game Friday night, seven or some, I'm sorry, 16 tackles uh, and two tackles for loss. Uh, I mean, you expect safeties. You expect those guys to put up big numbers as far as tackles go. Uh, but 16 is is pretty impressive. And then still being able to get tackles for loss, diving down in there, hitting people behind the line of scrimmage from your safety position or linebacker, he plays a, a little bit of both, um, is impressive. Is impressive. Anywhere the closer this kid gets to the ball, the more of a problem he becomes. Uh, he is just a he is a uh, heat seeking missile, and whenever he's just a playmaker in general on defense, uh, he can do a little bit of everything. I think he's even played a little bit on the offensive side too. I know he did last year on Gulf Shores on their uh, I guess their state championship run. Uh, that I think Gulf Shores. This was not a uh, uh, an area game or anything, but they played. Um, they played. Uh, I think it was Fort Walton. Whatever team Dante Cora is on in Florida, they played them the first game, and it was a do it was a fist fight. And uh, Fort Walton actually, or whoever Dante Cora plays for, they ended up coming out on top. But uh, I think he they won this past weekend, and uh, Gulf Shores is going to be a force. Chalk to Hatchie. I'm sorry. Uh, he plays for Chalk to Fort. It's it's in Fort Walton. But it's Choctahatchee High School is where Dante Core plays. They played the first game of the season. Uh, Choctahatchee knocked them off. But uh, J. Mike is still having a uh, having a big year and going to continue to have a big year. And uh, when we talk about stacking classes, when you bring in a, a two safeties to the level of uh, Anquan Fagans and Eric Winters, and then you turn around and you stack one on top with a guy like J. Mike who can do a little bit of it all, he is going to be a fun one to watch. I say he, he's locked into Auburn, but, I mean, this is going to be one of the top players in the country next year. So be prepared for other schools to come after this guy. LSU was after him very hard. LSU thought they had him. LSU thought he – there was crystal ball picks going in for him before he came to Big Cat Weekend. <laughs> he committed on Big Cat Weekend and broke some hearts. Uh, so – uh, J. Mike, uh, J. Michael Garrett, another big one. I mean, the recruits, man, just keep coming in. Auburn's about to really reel off. Uh, I really think they're going to reel off some guys that are going to be exciting. They're going to put up some big numbers that we can talk about. Hopefully, hopefully starting with Deuce Knight uh, on Saturday. Uh, he's already had a pretty big – he had a pretty good first game. Uh, re and we'll talk about that once, it, once it's official and he commits. We'll add him to the commit – Commit watch uh, or stat watch, whatever you want to call it, and we'll we'll put throw him in here too. Uh, Got to check out his pass efficiency, see how that's improved because uh, it looked pretty good after the first game. But yeah, we got some more guys coming, uh, more got more commits coming uh, in September, and when they pop, we'll throw those guys in here and we'll go through those guys as well. So guys, I really appreciate it. <clears throat> if you if you already are subscribed to the barn, you already knew all this, okay? Because we have a Friday night insights thread that's updated almost uh, immediately, uh, starts getting updated almost immediately after these kids play. So you'll have their stats popped in shortly after their game. Sometimes you can't get them until Saturday. Sometimes you can't get them until Sunday. But we're throwing those things in there uh, about as quick as we can find them, as quick as we can get them, as quick as we can get a hold of somebody. We're updating that uh, every, every single day after Friday. So once those kids play, we're going to be having highlights that you find on Twitter, everything that goes along with our commits and what they do on Friday nights, you can find them in our Friday nights insights thread 
at thebarnauburn.com. Sign up for your first month for only a uh, dollar. First month, only a dollar, and then it's $9.95. After that, uh, getting signups like crazy, memberships like crazy, a lot of great uh, co uh, content, a lot of great conversation, uh, and it's just a ton of fun in general. So check us out, thebarnauburn.com. Uh, and, you know, join in, join in, join in the conversation. Uh, guys, I really appreciate it. If you like this video, like it. If you like this channel, subscribe to it. Follow me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore five. And, you know, we're going to be back again tomorrow. So this is another episode of the Top Button Podcast. Stay buttoned. Thanks for listening and drive home safely.